Is your name Frank? You look like a Frank. Hey, it's me, Cisco Morse, and here's what's coming up on Gardening with Cisco. Time to plant or pot up some summer bulbs, including this show-stopping lily. Got water everywhere except in your drain pipe? We'll show you what might be wrong. Discover why duck eggs are delicious and a plant pick that can add flavor to your kitchen all spring and summer if you plant it correctly. All this and a South Seattle Destination Lodge and Restaurant coming up on Gardening with Cisco. Hi, I'm Cisco Morris. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. You know, we're here at the Copper Leaf Restaurant at Cedar Brook Lodge. Man, I can't wait to get in there and I see know. the restaurant. Isn't this gorgeous out here? Oh, this place is amazing. 18 acres of restored wetland right in the middle of the city. And you know, ever since this restaurant and lodge opened, it has been the talk of the town. The restaurant is getting rave reviews. We're going to tell you what makes it so special and unique coming up a little bit later on the show. Plus, if you visit here, how you can help Food Lifeline. But first, it's time to garden, don't you oh, think? Oh, of course. <laughs> hey, if you've got a bunch of summer bulbs, you need to get those babies into the ground. They hate staying in the package. So regardless of what it looks like outside, spring has sprung and we are finally here. It has taken so long. Oh and you gosh. have some stuff to be planting in the garden now. Yes. I love this time of year. Yes. What do you have? Now, you know, you go to uh, flower and garden Ooh. shows and the nurseries and you find things like this. So this is, is it? a yellow giant bleeding heart. Chinese bleeding heart. Oh, Look at that. The yellow flowers. I'm so excited. So now these are all in these little bags. Yep. And, and you know what? You don't want to leave them in the bags anymore longer than you have to. The minute you get a chance, open them up. Until it starts to establish some good roots, it thinks this could get into trouble. Okay. So I want to plant them up in pots. Is that going to give you a jump start on their blooms time then too, rather than waiting until it well, gets better? It, it might. I'm not sure. But what it definitely will do is make sure they're protected. I Look get to control. Look at this heart. Look at it starting to Ooh, come out. Ooh, it's got some new growth going. Yeah. Oh, so when I go to plant this, what am I doing? I want that new growth right, right at, at the top. Right at the surface. So you're going to keep these guys outside during the day. That's right. And put them in the garage at night. Yeah, and only okay. if it's a cold night. I'm okay. not going to worry about so it So this is the bleeding heart. Let's yeah. put the... Uh, Let's see what this... Uh, this guy on him. This little gladiola looks like here. Oh, I, got I love the two different colors of that. There he is. Make sure there's not two in there. You never know. You know, you got to really look through these things. Oh, uh -huh. I love making a mess. I know, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to dig way down for his roots. Yeah, good, good, good. Get that him. guy needs to go down a little deeper. Oh, does he? Like two yeah. inches down or so? Yeah, you know, a lot of times they write on these things. And, okay, now, Megan, look what we got now. <gasps> look at those a lilies. Lily. Now, lilies are so hardy. We'll just be able to grow that. We can Put plant that in the ground. In the ground. Okay, so that's awesome. no problem. Oh, my goodness. Oh, la, la. This is this the coup is... de grace of everything. It's getting a little dirty here. Oh, boy. Glorioso, it, it, what are they? It's a Gloriosa lily. Now this guy's not hardy at all. Okay. So what I'm so, gonna do, I'm gonna get it grown in I the grass. I have a feeling that's ah, what this guy is for. Bonita, yes. Now we have to be so gentle with this because. Do these... you see those flowers? Look at that. Oh my Lord. Yep. Hey, you oh. want a cigar? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, aren't they neat? How are, so, I, 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 I broke uh, uh, them before. So do you lay no, them on their side? We'll just lay them down horizontally down okay. there. Okay. And now all we do is cover them up. Oh, that is a vine. It, that that's is a vine. so cool. This is one of the coolest plants you can get, but it's hard to grow, I tell you what. I once paid $99 for a pot of them this big. Really? Now, I paid something like five bucks for these when you buy them this way, you know? <laughs> so at least you can take the risk without being out, That's you know, right. $100. You know, bucks. If it doesn't work, but I'll bet it'll work. I'll bet they'll come up. So and... I like the idea of potting your tubers right now yeah. in the small pots, as long as you remember, like me, to take them in at night That's if it gets right, cold. and get them out of that plastic bag. They're screaming for mercy in there. Yeah. They're going to mold in no time. So uh, it's not good to let them 
don't sit around, you know. What great ideas. I love oh, it. La, la. Well, I am, I am a genius, yes, you know. Uh, yes, you are, and you keep reminding yourself <laughs> of that. <laughs> So did you catch the name of that lily? You missed it? Can you believe they missed it? I Apparently, <laughs> people are missing the names of our plants, so we want to help you out. At the end of each of our segments, we are going to put up the name. So grab your pen and paper, get it ready, and since this was the first one, we are going to give you the name of that lily once again, but god darn it, I missed it too. What is it? <laughs> Gloriosa Rothschildsiana. Did you get that one? <laughs> Rothschilds one. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Thank you for calling in and letting us know, and we hope that that solves all the problems. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Cedar Brook Lodge. We've worked our way into the Copper Leaf Restaurant, where they specialize in farm-to-table cuisine. Ooh. Oh, la, la. You can't get more locally grown food than this. In fact, they even have their own mushroom patch. Take a look at this. Executive Chef Mark Baudinet took us out there. He grows brandy wine mushrooms and sautés them up fresh when they're in season. You know, Megan, mm. this same climate that makes those mushrooms grow so great, yeah. well, it causes one of the biggest problems that can happen to landscapers, bad drainage. Uh. Oh, la, la. Hey, but Hendrika, so I'll show you how to make sure that water stays right where you want it to be. Sometimes drainage systems look more like puddle systems. There's a lot of mistakes people make in drainage. Obviously, you know, like I've, I've gone and seen clients for the last 30, 40 years. And, and the whole yard is wet, and oh, I just had a drain system put in, and, and why is my yard so wet? And I said, well, by the looks of it, there's probably one dry space in your yard. I said, that's inside that drain pipe. According to Hendrikus, this is the number one reason a drainage system won't drain, backfilling with whatever you dug out to make the drain. Here he is demonstrating how not to do it. If you're putting that soil back on and that soil already wasn't draining to begin with, it's only going to be worse when you do it. And most people don't put their drainage in until it's too late, like now. And then you put that soil back in and it immediately seals up. And when you pour some water over that soil and it literally sits there and it's not perking, it's never going to make it down to that drain. And that was the reason you put the drain in to begin with. Instead, fill in with soil that drains. This is his company's essential soil he's putting in next to the non-draining native fill. See the difference? That, good. Some other things to consider for good drainage. Go organic. And so if you have a yard that isn't organically maintained to begin with, and you're using a lot of chemicals, which you basically are killing off those microbes, that already decreases, decreases your, your, your drainage capability in all your soil it will start to get worse and worse and worse. Put clean gravel around your pipe. It should be sand free. The landscaper taught no fines. Your gravel that you're putting around the drain pipe shouldn't be full of muck already. The fabric that goes over the pipe and the gravel should be light and porous. Use the white stuff. Even if you hire someone to do your drainage work for you, armed with this information, you'll know if they're doing it right. I would like people to learn that, that you know, if you have a drain system installed by the professional, for, to really question, you know, it's like, okay, this is the problem. What are we going to do about the soil? What are we doing? What are we draining? After all, since so much water falls from the sky here, we need to pay attention to where it goes. I'm draining just fine. <laughs> See, it runs off. Drainage is a great thing, especially in the Northwest, if it's working. Megan, did you see how deep that trench was? About a half a foot or so? Yeah, That's if you lot. don't go that deep, then the grass won't survive. So oh. don't go shallow, you're going to have a big dead strip right through the <laughs> middle of your lawn. And that is such a messy problem to have, so uh, do it right the first time. <laughs> Well, 
come back to Garni with Cisco, we finally made it into yes. the Copper Leaf restaurant. I can't wait to taste the great food. This place is such a great addition to the South Seattle restaurant scene. And a great addition to gardening with Cisco. A little highbrow for us, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of so. fancier than we're used to. Well, you know who loves great food and who makes great food. That is Chef Lynn Villa. In fact, she's at PCC kind of going crazy with all the fresh eggs these days. And she's not sticking with just chickens. The spring is in the air. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I know. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. So we have a spring dish. Yes, we do. Um, I love our selection of eggs that we have here at PCC. Free range, cage free, prairie fed. We've got it all, right. basically. And so what we're going to do today is a dish that I discovered in Paris. Still reminds me of France. Okay. And it's a morel and asparagus scrambled egg. And we're going to do duck eggs. Duck eggs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never had duck eggs. Duck eggs are incredibly popular here, and they're delicious. They're really? Basically, they, they taste very similar to chicken eggs, just a little bit richer. Okay. And they're a little bit bigger, so they make wow. a pretty presentation. Okay, okay, let's try it. All right, so. What are we going to uh, do? I've got this little instrument here. This is called an this. egg topper, oh, and we're going to hollow that. out these eggs. Really? Isn't that pretty? Yeah, that's very cool. Okay. I get to try it? Raw eggs, not, okay. in, you know, so we can <laughs> scramble want to do them that. off. Here, so. I don't want the hard boiled no, kind. That would be kind of a psych, okay. wouldn't it? So it's a little. Yeah, so you just, it's a little okay. popper. It's called an egg topper. You can get these online or at any of the kitchen stores. Wow. Whoop. So you can see that that just cuts a little, nice little perfect round top off of it. Oh, and then you that. can just dump the egg right into this bowl and we're going to scramble those up. So once you've once you've scooped the egg out, you take these, you rinse them really well. Okay. Then you put them you put them back in their little crates and pour boiling water into them. Let them sit okay. for a few minutes, and then turn them upside down. Let them dry. And so that, that gets rid of any of the uncooked exactly. food type exactly. things. Okay. So these perfect. are already processed. So nice. why don't we? Oh, kind of fun. Yeah. We'll cook like some eggs. Okay. Okay. Okay, so a little we had a little cream and a little goat cheese in there. Okay, okay. make and it now, a little richer, right? Yeah, exactly, and so creamier. Some butter. Yep, some butter. This is very French, you know. Yes, got to have all the good ingredients. That. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, so first let's get our shallots okay. and our asparagus going. Okay. Beautiful. And we've taken, what I did was I saved some of the tips of the asparagus, uh -huh. and we're going to use those for garnish. Garnish, okay. Yeah, and then I cut the stems super, super thin. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. The, you know, if you think about it, we're going to have to tuck this back into the eggshells so there can't be a lot of big oh, chunks of Oh, is that things. what we're, oh, yeah. cool, okay. So that's all. <laughs> I get it, you yeah. know. That's why we went to so much trouble. <laughs> okay, and then I've got some finely chopped morels, and these are just dried morels that I rehydrated, and all some right. fresh thyme. Ooh, yum. Yeah. So oh. those are those are the I can wonderful eat just this. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> that looks it's nummy. Very, uh, very French, very spring like, yeah. you know. And then as the seasons progress, you can, you know, you can change up the ingredients. And when fresh morels come into season or yeah. later in the fall, fresh chanterelles, you know, there's all kinds really of beautiful whatever. things you can do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So now I'm going to add the eggs. And the, the, this style of scrambled egg, we don't want big curds. Okay. We want to really almost like whip it to, together. So it's going to be a nice smooth it. creamy. Okay. Interesting. Look at that. Yeah, you know, this dish but isn't really a breakfast dish. This is more not. of a brunch or a okay. lunch dish. In Paris, you'll, you'll see this served even at dinner as like the first course for a really nice dinner. So when they start to get this nice soft souffle, uh -huh. we turn the heat off. Okay. Because they're going to continue to cook. Sure. Exactly. Oh, I can smell yeah. the oh goat my gosh. cheese in there. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look at that. You did a beautiful job. Thank you. Next step. Fill them. <laughs> yeah. How am I going to get that into uh -huh. these little things? I'm just going to stand back and watch. Yes. Watch me do my yes. thing. Now, I have to tell you that this doesn't have to be the neat, precise part okay. of this, right? Because then we'll neaten them up. We're going to pipe a little creme fraiche on top. So we're going to, you know, we're okay. going to fasten so we'll up all the edges Fill them in. There. Don't worry yeah, about exactly. that. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Nice. And then they go in these yep, cute little right cucumber, cucumber cups. cups. Love it. Oops. Okay. Okay. That one's a little so, big. So then the next step is we're just going to take it and just pipe a little bit on the top here. Oh, cute. And Look then there's that. all kinds of things you can top these with. Asparagus spear. Another asparagus there's spear the across tops. the top. Yeah. And then I just chopped a little fresh radish with some chives and a little olive oil and salt, and that's it. And that screams early spring. To Isn't me. that just it the totally prettiest does, little thing? Yeah. yeah. And then you can just put a little sprig of thyme on there if you like, and you are good. Because we have the thyme. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's it. You're out of here. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I can't know. even do it now. I'm laughing so hard. And I'm making and I'm a mess. Yes. <laughs> All right. So there you go. And that's that's right. adorable. Now, here's the question. 
the heck do you eat those? Oh, with a little spoon. Let's do there it. There you are, go for it. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Hang on to that egg. There you go. Mmm. Wow, that's a good bite. You did well. Oh, that tastes good. Mm -hmm. You know what's really prominent is that cheese. That oh, tastes yeah? good. Yeah, no, that's really good. With the tartness and the crunchiness uh -huh. and stuff. Yep. Ooh, love it. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Copper Leaf Restaurant, where I fall in love with this cute little frog and the Isn't snail. that adorable? Oh, I They're just so love them. Well, you know, Megan, not everybody has room for a gigantic vegetable garden, but if you still want to bring in some food for the table from the garden, then grow our next great plant pick. Because it is way cheaper to buy the whole plant than it is to pick it up in the produce aisle. <laughs> So Cisco loves his vegetable garden, so why not spread it out throughout an entire yard, right? That's Particularly right. Particularly in the form well, of you, parsley. I love parsley so much, it's so good. Oh la la. It is pretty tasty. You're mm, not supposed to keep your breath mm, fresh, too. Mm, That's ah. what they say. And, you know, so I like eating it all the time. If you plant it all around in your garden in little sunny spots, you can graze all summer long while you're out gardening. How do you know this from the weeds? <laughs> when you taste it, you'll know. <laughs> and I also noticed you got some fertilizer or yeah, stuff. Yeah, because parsley needs a lot of fertility and it needs a high pH. So we're going to stick some bone meal in oh, too, Megan. Oh, that's what this one is over yeah. right here. So, hey, can you throw me that trowel over there? So for anybody that doesn't know, parsley is a one-year plant. Oh. It's, it's a biennial, but it'll go to... You can eat it next year for a while, but then it goes to flower and seed and, and it's no it good anymore good. after that. So I got a nice little hole in here and then do I just toss in a little fruit and yeah, bone meal? Yeah, so yeah, about a, oh, a quarter handful of bone meal is all you need. What about and, the fertilizer? Yeah, probably, let's see, yeah, a quarter handful. Perfect, because this is organic. We're not going to burn it no matter what we do. Okay, so, bone meal, fertilizer, yep. here. Thank you very much. You know what, I'll just give you a little handful, this is heavy. Oh, perfect. You, you can you throw in there? Oh, perfect, the menthol. Okay. So then we just mix that up. And this stuff won't harm or do anything to your other plants? No, the no. higher pH yeah. or the... I mean, no, the only possible problem would be if I got, this is a little higher nitrogen fertilizer because I don't want to make this go to seed. I want it to grow like a wild right, banshee. Right. You know? So, uh, but, you know, it's not close enough to any of these other plants to make to much difference. Harm. Look yeah. at that. So it looks cute, but I got to tell you, a little weedy looking. <laughs> I'm a little concerned. I like the looks of it. It does. I just don't want to be eating a weed accidentally. <laughs> so if I ever get a hankering for parsley, I think I might just throw some in my uh, Man, garden. I'll tell you, you can use it to cook, but I like just eat that when I'm out gardening. I think we should put some over there so that when I'm working over there, I got a food source too. <laughs> you go do that, I'm hungry for tabbouleh. <laughs> Scott Ostrander, the general manager at Cedarbrook Lodge, is joining us now. Thank you so much for having us today. This is awesome. Oh, this is food look delicious. Scott, tell me, what is all this stuff? Well, in, in, in short order, uh, you have a macaw tribe, line-caught steelhead salmon. Ooh. And uh, Megan, you have a wonderful caramelized sea scallops uh, oh, from the Pacific favorite. Northwest. But wait a minute, what are those? Hey. Brussels sprouts? Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I'm happy. So I think we should dig in, guys, oh, don't you? Yeah, Thank enough you of this very much. And holy Thanks cats. so much for watching, everyone. We won't torture you by telling you how delicious this is, but let me tell you, it <laughs> smells <might>. good. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Oh, no, no.